Welcome back to Outdoor Greatness, everybody. We're here at the lease again on our third full day out here. A um, few videos into this series now, and just to catch you guys up to speed, I've been trying to go after a deer with my self bow. I know this is going to probably disappoint some of you, but I have decided to put down the self bow for now. I've got two more sits. We've got tonight and we got tomorrow morning. So we're going to take the compound. If you guys missed my, my bow build video, I actually built two bows for this year. And I built this one specifically for hunting in low light uh, crammed conditions. So for most of us, that means a ground blind. I think a lot of you ground blind hunters would really like this bow, but having no peep sight uh, going just with that feel. I'm taking some of the, some of the things that I've learned shooting traditional archery and applying it to using it in this compound. I guess it's not gonna hurt to take a few practice shots with this thing, especially switching from traditional going to here. It's a big difference. Switching gears big time. Those arrows right there seemed like they were in slow motion going towards that deer this morning. Uh, compared to watching watching these fly, it's just crazy how fast these things are now. But I'm gonna switch to broadhead now. Put that iron wheel on here, and ideally, we want it to hit in the same spot. So if it doesn't, then we've got problems. I mean, it could have been me on the shot, but if it is shooting an inch lower at 20 yards, I'm. I'm okay with that, just because deer's probably gonna duck a little bit. Well guys, we may need to call an audible. Oh, this is a buck that I saw last year that he just escaped me. But he is coming in in the evenings here. Oh, that's late though. Here he's at 5.30, 4.30. Oh my gosh, that's like in two hours. What in the world? It's coming to the feeder where I've killed a buck before. Now I'm torn. Do I go back to a deer that I shot at twice this morning? A deer that, I mean, it's a great management buck that needs to go. <laughs> I said I wasn't gonna, gonna care about trophy trophy deer this year there was a lot of opportunities there with not just that buck I ignored that stand because when I was scouting I saw a doe and a fawn there and I thought well uh, I'm not gonna mess with that you know I don't want to kill that doe uh, I could see the the fawn laying in the grass and I kind of left it alone but I just pulled that car today just to kind of check and it's got mega hogs in the evenings I might risk it for the biscuit here if I get a shot at that buck. Okay, we're going right now. We're gonna go see if there's lanes. It's the middle of the day, 2.30. This is just a good time to do it. Oh man, scramble. Absolute scramble. Thank you. 
Glad I went and did that because the, the tree had grown up a little bit. Now I got multiple lane options. I'm gonna get a couple of fresh fletched arrows out of here. Um, I shot through the target a couple of times and uh, kind of messed up my fletchings and I wasn't really happy with the, the fletching jobs. I got a new um, fletching jig and uh, did a couple of fresh ones before we came out here. So. I'm gonna shoot them. I'm gonna get up on our, um, our rifle tower. I just wanna stand up, shoot down, just make sure everything's flying good. You know, we're, we're dotting the T's and crossing the I's the other way around. That's probably why I missed this morning. I did find a turkey feather though. Pretty cool, future fletching. Ugh. I've never shot with this pack on, so I wanna make sure nothing's getting in the way. Bad shot. It's kind of scary. Damn, what is going on? Those both those arrows hit like eight inches to the right. I mean, how could my bow be that far off? Would the fletchings be that big of a deal? Guess we're about to find out with this shot. Oof. It's 100% a wind issue. We're definitely gonna have to deal with this wind. There's no question, it's pushing my arrow six to eight inches. Hoping I don't sweat my rear end off. I'm trying to time this right. It's like hottest part of the day right now, starting to fade off. Hopefully that north wind comes in a little bit. I've been spraying scent killer all over my gear. Like every time I come back, I only wear it hunting. I spray it down again. I let it air dry. So hopefully that helps, but we shall see. A little breeze right here. Gonna take a little 20 yard plank of rooski. Make sure the booger button's working with our shirt we got on. And we're good. Yeah. 
guys can hear that, but there's a doe blowing probably 150 yards from me. Don't know why. There's no way she can smell me. She's done it four or five times, getting closer every time. Made the gamble. The gamble did not pay off, but I left my bow in the stand. Obviously these more mature bucks, they're just more elusive. They eluded me last year. You know, every time I'd be like, oh yes, they're showing up on camera. I'd go there, they wouldn't be there. They go to another spot. It's like this whack-a-mole thing. I mean, they're great at it. He's pretty daggum smart. He's made it this long. And that other, there's a seven point that's just long tines. He's, he's mature too. So, uh, those two deer, man, they're walking around together. I've seen them together, uh, again, last year. Um, they're on that buddy system right now. I just, I just need them to come. One last chance. Mornings have been good. So I think we'll see at least something, but I hope one of these bucks messes up and comes in. So. Let's get in the ATV, let's roll out there. We're gonna be about an hour early getting into the stand. It's gonna be, uh, it's really calm right now. So I'm gonna be stealthy. I'm gonna park the ATV in my normal path, walk in a long ways and uh, just go light in there. We've got most of the stuff already up there. I'm um, just carrying the camera equipment in. So I'm mic'd up again. Hopefully I'll be able to talk to you guys if there's a little bit of wind, but if there's no wind, I've just gotta be dead, dead silent, so. Fingers crossed, let's get it done.
Guys, it was a crazy opener. I'll give it that. So there was a lot of eyeballs out there this morning and that big buck, you know, he was following the, the does lead. I, I thought that he would hang with that other buck and we'd see more of that action. And usually when there's a couple bucks together, they go straight in, they start eating. Man, the does, they were sketchy from the get go. They came in right under my stand and I could hear like leaves crunching behind me for like five minutes. And I was scared to even turn my head because I knew they were, they were probably checking me out. They, they smelled something, they didn't like it. You know, they did a circle, came back, and when they start doing that, it's like, man, they're just, they're just not down with the program. I had a chance at a doe. I was gonna give it five minutes, and if the, if the does were still there and I hadn't seen the buck, then I was gonna go ahead and take the shot, but that buck started to come back and as soon as I said buck, I don't know if the, if the doe saw the buck about to come in and she kind of got sketchy because normally when the big buck gets in there, everything kind of leaves. Um, or she heard me say buck. It was like buck up and she looked up and, and then she put her tail up and then he followed suit and it was just like, golly. We were this close. We were this close to having an opportunity. That's the challenge of bow hunting. Uh, this whole trip down here has been awesome though. Hunting with the trad bow, the primitive bow. Uh, I haven't forgotten about that six point either. I'm gonna check the camera and see if he's still there. Um, he's, he's definitely on, on the list, but got lots of does running around too, it looks like. A little too many, so um, we got opportunities on the table. So. I'll come back and uh, I'll be a little less picky. Let me tell you something, this hammock right here, I, I love sleeping in this thing in this weather. Like I, I've normally slept in the truck uh, when I'm truck camping, but I backed my truck up against the, this little tree here, kind of gave it, a, you know, about 12 foot or so. And man, it's perfect. It is really perfect, especially under this oak tree. I get a little cover from the dampness. Look at the stars at night. Just a little fleece blanket. I got the program. If you guys ever want to hammock camp, hammock sleep, a um, little pillow. You, you kind of get this weird, like your elbows get crunched in. You just put that pillow right here. Just put it right there, rest your arms on it. Your head's already elevated. It's the deal. I don't know why I gave a random camping tip right there, but <laughs> I just love this hammock. Thank you guys for being here. Go ahead and smash that like button for uh, hunting in the great outdoors. And um, I hope your arrows are flying true. And I'll see you guys soon on the next one.